Well, good afternoon and, and welcome everybody for this afternoon's course information session um, for the child, youth and family mental health courses that we've commenced here at the Camilla, at the Camilla Institute. So just as we commence, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we're meeting, and that is wherever you are around Australia. Um, for us um, at the moment, when I'm in Eltham, which is the Wurrung people, and um, Kamala itself is in the Burundara Council, and Burundara actually is an Indigenous word meaning thickly shaded. And I'd like to pay my respects to both elders past and present and emerging along with any Indigenous people and other mother communities and who may be indeed here today. So thank you, but welcome to everybody. So I guess the inspiration for the child, youth and family mental health courses was that there are a lot of courses and programs and practitioners out there, educators who work with children, but don't necessarily get a lot of child, youth and family content in their courses. I was a registered nurse before a psychologist and, um, and in both courses I um, could have benefited from doing some more coursework in child, youth and family, certainly in mental health as well. So we've been also reading a lot in the media um, and certainly you may have read articles and things in the age that have talked about that children in primary school age even have been threatening suicide and and, and voicing suicidal ideation and things too. So, so our need to address mental health in a systems family unit becomes really important. So we'll be offering courses this coming year in, in both a graduate certificate in child, youth and family mental health, semester program, along with the graduate diploma in, in child, youth, family mental health and a master in child, youth and family mental health. People are eligible to apply if you have a degree. It doesn't have to be in health or education discipline. It just needs to be um, a degree. And you also need to, of course, show us a really strong interest and, and reasons why you'd like to do this course and you can be eligible to apply. We have accrediting bodies that we're working with at the moment to get course accreditation, which I will talk about in a little while. And, and the courses are available this year. This year we'll be offering the graduate certificate um, as well as the master's program. So the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare recently reported that almost 14% of children aged four to 11 years of age experienced a mental disorder. The most common disorder or learning disorder is ADHD, attention deficit disorder, um, which is at 8.2% most common in boys. Anxiety disorders at 6.9% was more common in girls. Data was similar for those who are in those age brackets between 12 to 17 years with anxiety being the most common. And one to four, 16 to 24 year olds, that is 26% experienced a mental disorder over the 12 month pre-survey. Um, this was the highest of any age group in ongoing surveys from 16 to 85 years. And I think anyone who has actually lived through the COVID period that we have um, over these last few years understand and know the stress and the strains that, you know, children and families and, and youth have been going through during this time um, with its many challenges and things as well. So what we're seeing, because at Pam Miller Institute, we have a, um, you know, we have our education that we're providing that we're talking about today. We also have a, a clinic here and we've got several clinics in, in Victoria and we also conduct quite a lot of research as well. And what we're seeing is that we are seeing that suicidal ideation in, in children as young as five years old. Um, we see self-harm significant behavioural issues have been coming to our attention, anxiety, um, autism spectrum disorder, depression, um, including major depressive disorder, even in those age groups, ADHD, conduct disorders, phobias, substance use disorders, and affective disorders or emotional disorders, including anxiety. And um, so, you know, to address these mental health issues, you know, we need to address the needs of children and families. And for those of you with a teaching background, you will know that when you're looking after students and, 
and children and, and youth that the family unit becomes really important to also be part of that focus as well. So in order to address these concerns and, and issues that we've been looking at, reading about in the media and, and hearing um, um, more colloquially, we, we've put together this program and um, this is the whole suite of the grad search, grad dip and the master's program. So if I just walk you through it, so we start with foundational counselling skills and psychotherapeutic approaches. We've got foundations in child and adolescent development and assessment. We talk about supporting and coaching parents and families. We also talk about prevention and early intervention. And this also includes family and domestic violence as well. We have a unit here on professional practice and ethics, as well as working with families and advanced child and adolescent development and assessment. So what, what you will understand while I'm going through these units is that we have um, a very strong um, emphasis in this course on assessment, because if we assess well, we'll whether it's the child, youth or families, but if we're assessing well, we will also make better informed decisions about what the appropriate intervention or treatment or therapy is for those um, affected. So we have a supervised placement, you'll see there, just bang in the middle of the program. So this is a really good opportunity to start putting skills into practice. That supervised placement, um, there are actually two placements. There's also the final placement at the end of the whole program. That first one, we, we do a lot of that work, sort of experiential in-house building skills and it's very skills focused placements can be in some, in some cases be um, managed within your workplace if it's appropriate. So we've also got a unit on diversity in child, youth and family practice. We have a unit on evidence-based child and adolescent therapies. We have a small research project, um, which is called research methodology in child, youth and family studies. So it's not cumbersome. It's just an opportunity to learn more about the scientist practitioner process. It's not like you have to complete a, a whole large thesis or anything like that. If some of you have done theses in, in other coursework um, subjects. There's a unit here on advanced counselling in complex cases. And there's another unit on intergenerational trauma and trauma-focused interventions, because you may have also just um, or understand that often trauma experienced by the person can sometimes be layered trauma that's, that's, that exists through um, generations within the family. And we have the research project B and C there, which allows you to do a bit more of a deep dive into the research project. And, and then we finish with the supervised placement so it's quite comprehensive, as you see. And, um, and as I said, we've got quite an emphasis in this program on you know, conducting sound assessments, making evidence-based decisions, and therefore practicing in an evidence-based sort of way. So, um, so that's our main focus of the program. We look at the content around child, youth, and family in a systemic sort of way. So we're looking at how the family system can both help and support um, changes that, that need to make in, in order to address the mental health problems um, and concerns that, that people have. So um, I think we've got a couple of questions there in the chat, do we? Yeah, we've just got um, one question. Are any of the subjects offered as a single unit? Yes, they are. Um, so we have, um, all. I think almost all of the units that we're providing this year in terms of the, um, in terms from the graduate certificate. And if we do run the master's program, we'll be offering those as a single unit. So I think that might be the first um, semester one units, um, counseling skills and psychotherapeutic approaches and foundations in child and adolescent development and assessment. So people are welcome to apply for a single unit, but you don't have to apply to do the whole course. Normally, these sort of courses are chunked where if you were conducting or, or participating in a subject full time, it would normally have around four units that you would be completing. 
So each unit is thought of as having around 10 hours of work attached to that for each of the week of the 12 weeks of the program. So just to give you an idea of, um, of, of that's how much it would be up to, sort of 10 hours a week you'd need to put aside for doing a single unit. But certainly we, we provide those single units if possible. Thanks, Catherine. And do we source the placement opportunities for students? And can you provide an example? Yes, we do. Um, we can we provide we can provide placement opportunities actually in our very own clinic. So um, so we have actually a purpose family therapy rooms, and we also have a purpose built um, child therapy room as well. So um, that has specialised or, or special child seats and tables and play equipment and sandpit and other things. So um, so that's an example. But in general, I will say in regards to all of our programs here at Cam Miller, we would have over 100 partners that we work with um, every year, um, whether they're hospitals or community services. So we do not generally find it difficult to find a placement for people. It might take us a little bit longer if you're interstate because we don't have the relationships there, but we're certainly building those relationships. This is not the first program that we're offering where we have placements interstate. So we can certainly um, source those programs for you for the placement. And as I said earlier, there's also a possibility in some cases at your workplace for some of you that may be based in a school or, or based in a health service where it may be appropriate to have the placement there as well. So I hope that answers your question. If not, type in some, some more, um, more of what you need. So the entry requirements for the graduate certificate and graduate diploma, applicants have to have completed an Australian bachelor degree, usually minimum entry standard is a credit average of at least 60%. So I guess in real terms, what this kind of means is we're, we're expecting people to apply that, um, that are most likely going to have a bachelor degree already um, and a very strong interest and, and, and can show that in terms of that they want to work with child, youth and family. We can make exceptions where people may have quite a lot of industry experience too. So please don't hesitate to apply if you're sitting there and thinking I've got all this experience and, and no basic bachelor, um, please still do submit your application and we will look at it and, and see what, what needs to happen to make it a possibility. For the master's program, people need to have completed an Australian graduate diploma or equivalent at NAQF level eight. So that's a postgraduate diploma. A minimum entry standard of a credit average, at least 60% is also required. So if you're wanting PAC for an um, accreditation and specifically for the master's program, you will need to have a counselling and psychology background. And we're just confirming at the moment whether also psychologists, social workers and others can also um, benefit from that too. It was a little bit ambiguous in, in, in the paperwork. But otherwise we will be um, applying for ACA accreditation um, for the graduate diploma level. So here we have this more defined. So we already have TEXA accreditation for these three programs, which is why we're offering it. The Australian Counselling Association, um, we're going to have the accreditation at the graduate diploma level and at the master course level. And then also the Psychotherapy and Counselling Federation of Australia, PACFA, is the other association. And, um, and we're applying and seeking for specialist accreditation. And there may indeed be two levels of that accreditation that we're seeking. And um, we'll be submitting that application at the end of this month, actually. So we should be soon. So, um, and as it's stated here, there's also a potential to apply for RPL um, or recognised prior learning if you have a previous course of study that's relevant. So where can you apply? So the applications are open until the 22nd of January. So there's still a couple of weeks to get your applications in, folks. Um, we're going to commence with the graduate certificate and um, part-time and possibly the master's. The application for accreditation with um, ACA and PACFA will be submitted soon. Um, and we'll certainly know that at around the time the course commences or shortly thereafter. 
So anyone with entry requirements who are interested in mental health of our children, youth and families are encouraged to apply. Those working with children, youth and families, people wanting to learn more about the development assessment, risk prevention and intervention, we're also hoping will apply for this program. I guess ultimately we, we want to make a difference. Um, we, we want to make a difference through helping, you know, increase our understanding of the issues, including family and domestic violence, knowledge of child and adolescent development. We want to build the capacity and capability to understand the assessment tools that are relevant to children and families. We want to enhance critical thinking, application of our knowledge in this area. We want to develop your analytical skills and ethical approach to your work, um, including empathy, counselling skills and evidence-based practice. So they're, they're all good things that we can do that will help increase capability and capacity in our community by, because of having more people trained in this area of child, youth and family. So why choose Cam Miller in general? Um, Cam Miller has been around for 60 years, as many of you will know. We are a dedicated faculty that only looks and, and teaches and educates and researches in mental health. We are undistracted by business schools and law schools. You know, we're higher education equivalent. Um, we also provide a few other value added parts of the course. We have a free leadership training and peer mentoring program. So if people want to opt in and have some leadership training that they're welcome to, we have a very supportive environment and a close community of students. I think that's actually probably one of the most um, cited things from students saying that they just love learning in a more of a boutique sort of learning environment. We've got modern and attractive learning facilities and classrooms. So obviously later you can go on a course, uh, you know, facilities tour. Um, I believe we've got a really inspiring colloquium program. Um, some of our work is co-designed. And if you've heard of co-design, it's where we have people who have, say, been affected by family domestic violence, and they're also having input into our education and what's important to them to learn to get out of this program. So um, we have um, academics who are experts in course design who are designing these programs and delivering them. Um, all of our lecturers are trained psychologists or counsellors and have a lot of experience in working with child, youth and families. So there is the boutique learning experience. We have added professional development opportunities um, that are heavily discounted. So, for example, we, we have the assist program, the applied suicide um, learning that we do. The, um, and they often made available to students. We've got career advice and mentoring. We have academic writing and studies skills support. And the next couple of weeks, we're putting on a specialist student disability support advisor that can help people who have disabilities, um, you know, that may be to do with their learning or reading or, or hearing or sight impediments and things. Um, and ultimately, we have a friendly staff with an open door approach. You know, we mainly provide postgraduate studies. So therefore, you know, we're, we're working with people who are adult learners and that, that's our zone and, and that's what we're interested in. And that's where we have a lot of experience. So our learning and our units for this program specifically, you may like to know, and the person who's interested in the single subject also is it with the 10 hours, for example, for each study, you know, 10 hours per week for each unit that you take on. We actually conduct what we call a flipped classroom where we already have prepared pre-reading presentations and readings for the classroom. And you can do that at any time in your own, in your own time. And then we have a tutorial session that I think is around four o'clock in the afternoon that runs to 5.30. And um, and that's on every second week per unit. So um, so if you're just doing one unit, there's just one tutorial you attend every fortnight. If you're doing the two units, which is a half time load, that that's two tutorial or one tutorial every week that you'll be attending that lasts for about ninety minutes. And in that session, if you're needing assistance with your assignment, you can be provided with that assistance as well. 
So we aim to provide a very flexible program for, you know, people who want to be committed to working with child, youth and family mental health programs. And, um, and it'll be a small cohort starting off. So the advantage is, is that um, there'll be lots of time for discussion and support around assignments and things like that as well. So, um, so I'll just pause there. Are there any other questions in the chat box, Claudia? Yes. Um, in addition to the parent-child relationship, does it include um, the relationship between a couple? Yes, it does. So, um, so we, um, and that's a really good question, as I didn't address it. And um, and it does also include sort of work with couples, which is actually also um, really common in terms of what comes to our practice here at Cam Miller is, is is asking for couple work. So certainly. Thank you. And could you please comment on the therapeutic models that are covered in the course in, for example, the counselling skills unit? Okay. So we learned several different, um, you're, actually, or you're actually exposed in a really light way to different types of therapeutic approaches because different approaches resonate um, for different people. Our focus is very much on looking at systems theory with regards to families and we utilise um, CBT, Cognitive Behavioural Therapy. We also look at attachment as also being a really important theme. In fact, we don't feel like we can teach this program without looking at attachment and attachment theory, informing some of the, the practices and things as well. So um, we don't generally just look at two approaches, uh, you know, one, one single approach. So you get exposed to a few different things and then we'll focus on assessment, CBT, and, um, and as well as the attachment and systems theory and thinking. So I hope that answers your question. And I think with a lot of these programs, we give you some tools and some solid tools to walk away to competently work with people but with all courses in psychology, counselling, psychotherapy and, and social work, I think we all know that, um, that you know, it's lifelong learning and, and, other, and other tools might be really helpful. So as a psychologist, I learned cognitive behavioural therapy, but I actually really like the gestalt approaches, so, um, which I was exposed to. And then in some of my own time during my um, continual practice, that's what I learned about to, to add to my toolkit. So um, I hope that answers your question. Thanks. And how effectively can counselling skills be developed in an online course as opposed to in person? Yeah, look, great question. I think one of the advantages is that we do have small classes. So it means that you do have, um, you know, you, you do have quite a lot of individual attention um, within the class. And I think the things that we've learned since COVID is that we have just got better at running online programs, at understanding how to maximise or optimise doing simulations and different things and different opportunities and different sort of learning and teaching techniques. So, for example, um, there is a technique called the fishbowl technique, which is often used in counselling and, and therapy for learning and building skills and, and in coaching as well. And, and we've learned and, and adapted ways of using online technologies to use this very um, exciting um, learning tool. So, um, so we're actually very confident in our online teaching capability now. Um, our staff have adapted beautifully to the online environment and therefore have transferred that across to working with classes and working with people and hand on heart and speaking to the staff group that they feel very confident that, that students are still able to adapt and learn. Thanks, Catherine, that's all for now. Yep, okay. So um, I might hand it over to you, Claudia. So Claudia is part of our school administration team and Megan's on board here as well today too. So hi, Megan, and I will hand it over to you both to talk about the applications. Thanks, Catherine. Um, as mentioned, my name is Claudia and I'm joined by Megan, my colleague, um, and we are a part of the student admin team. Uh, so we work in enrolments and admissions, um, and we're just going to take you through the basic steps of applying to the course. So next, uh, actually, oh, while we're on that slide, sorry, that's okay, we don't have to go back. Um, 
our email address is applications at cammiller.edu.au as shown on the slide. Um, so feel free to email any um, last minute questions to that email and we've got a team of people behind that um, to respond. Thanks. All right, so applications close on the 22nd of January, 2023. If for whatever reason you're having issues applying, um, please send us an email just so that we can understand your intent. So you are intending to apply and if we do have any issues, then we can follow those up as soon as possible. Um, applications are currently being reviewed. So they've, they were started, uh, they started being reviewed in December and continue through to January when applications close and following applications closing. Orientation, we've actually just locked in the date. I'm not sure, Catherine, are you happy for me to advertise? Yep, so we're looking at the 15th of February, I believe, which is a Wednesday for orientation. And someone asked about the class timetable before. Hopefully we'll have those details set in stone in the coming weeks. So when we distribute the, the slides and the recording of this session, maybe we can send out some information about the class timetable as well. Um, just so if you are planning on applying, um, you can, you'll, you'll have an idea of when you're expected to attend classes. Uh, and classes start the week beginning of the 20th of Feb. Thanks, Catherine. All right, so here's how to locate our application portal. So if you jump on our snazzy new website um, and go to study at CMI at the top, uh, how to apply is right there. So if you click on that, it'll take you through the instructions on how to apply, and then it'll bring you to the next slide, which is our application portal. Here we are. So if you've never registered before, um, you'll need to create an account on our portal. So it's very easy to do, just a few questions and if you have registered in the past for another course or you've had a look at our application portal previously, then you'll just need to log in with those details. If you're having any issues, you can send an email to our um, help desk, which is, I might, uh, Megan, if you're all right, putting our help desk email in the chat, um, our IT team will be able to assist. Thanks, Catherine. All right, so upon logging in, um, you'll see the student dashboard, which asks you to uh, apply for the course. So you'll apply um, through, the uh, through the portal and you'll be able to edit your submission up until we go in and review your application. So you can, you can edit your application right up until we kind of mark it as complete. After it's marked as complete, you can't touch it. So you'll need to email us if you need to attach any additional documents. However, you will be able to um, update it initially. You can't, however, start an application and go back to it if it's incomplete. So you need to submit a complete application initially. So make sure you've got all your documents kind of by your side um, when you go to apply, just because it won't let you save and go back to it later if it's incomplete. Thanks, Catherine. I'll start talking to the next slide anyway. Um, We've got our FAQ on our website and you'll see it once um, the slide decides to change, um, but uh, you're welcome to access our FAQ on our website. And there's just a number of kind of frequently asked questions that might assist you while applying uh, for the course. Thanks, Catherine. In regards to tuition fees and funding, um, for all our higher education courses, we do offer a number of ways to pay for your tuition. So we've got fee help, which is very similar to hex help if you've used it in your undergraduate degree. It's just, um, it's, a, it's a very similar government loan scheme. Just for full fee paying places instead of Commonwealth uh, supported places. So we've got fee help, we've got, um, you can pay your fees through a kind of private loan provider. However, we do recommend that you get your own legal advice around that. Um, it is a legitimate website, ZFI. However, yeah, you need to get your own advice on any personal loans. And of course, you can pay upfront. So if you choose to pay via SPOS, bank transfer, credit card, cash, however else you like to pay, uh, you're welcome to do so. Our accounts team will also, if you do choose to pay upfront, um, we there might be the opportunity to work out a payment plan for you as well. Thanks, Catherine. If you are interested, I know this is an online course, but if you are interested, feel free to, when you receive our slides, or you can, you can jump on our website and have a search for our virtual tour. 
and that'll take it uh, take you through our campus. Thanks, Catherine. Any questions related to admissions? We'll try our best to to answer them. Um, we're actually filling in for our deputy academic registrar today, so if we can't answer anything, we'll be sure to grab your email and get back to you. However, if you do have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. I think there's one question, what books are used in the course, Catherine, and when will the course information be released? I guess you can answer the first half of that question. I'm not sure what you mean by the course information you wanted to clarify, but yeah, are there any textbooks for this course? Yes, certainly. So, um, so we have um, a mixture of textbooks and, and journal articles, and they are part of the course. They're documented in our unit guides, and and um, we can certainly distribute that. I think that's along with the course information, Claudia. I think it's um, once people enrol, do they get access to the course information then? That's right. The more specifics, like the text list and things like that, um, as for the broad course information, you can find that on our website already. Um, it has been published since the course was accredited. So yeah, um, uh, if you're interested in specifics, then feel free to email our applications email. Um, maybe Megan, can you put our applications email in the chat and um, you can yeah. send any specific questions to that email and we can help you out there. Sure, I'll also put a link to the um to the website where our course handbooks are. So I'm not sure if that question, yeah, was relating to that. So I'll pop that link there. So feel, do feel free to download uh, the course handbooks for the grad certificate, diploma and masters as well. Yeah, but I think I might also just mention as well that we have quite a, um, we've done quite a lot of enhancements with our library at the moment and all the textbooks required are also in our library. Um, many of which we now have as ebooks. So, um, as we're also responding to people who aren't coming into Hawthorne East, whether um, it's for illness or whether it's because they're interstate or regionally based. So, um, so, so the books that are required are also there. And as I said, many of them are available as ebooks as well. We don't have any more questions in the chat. Um, so, if we're happy to wrap it up, maybe we could. Otherwise, um, like I said, yeah, feel free. Our email is very active and we've got a number of people monitoring it. So do send any questions that you have through the applications at camilla.edu.au and um, we can answer any last minute questions there. Yes, and thank you so much for your interest in um, in, in the course. Um, we're, we're very excited. As I said, we're thrilled. We, we believe we're filling a real genuine gap of knowledge in, in the community. And we hope you're interested to be part of that. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>